So we're hearing a lot today about distinctive services um, and aligning them with the parent organization and maximizing their impact. Um, we've now acknowledged that collections are services, um, but one of the challenges in this discussion, I think, uh, especially for special collections, is that we're becoming the place where the library is pinning its collection future. Perhaps we need to rebrand special collections around services, access, use, um, and engagement. Uh, it, so it's pretty common in our community uh, to note that as our general collections become more homogenous and widely shared and more information seeking happens online and in common virtual spaces, that what distinguishes our libraries are the distinctive collections that are unique to our specific institutions or local communities. Um, the obligatory cele celebrating research slide, um, <laughs> the much loved except by Scott. Um, and uh, special collections and archives in particular, as Nicholas um, Barker notes in his introduction to the ARL publication, um, become distinctive signifiers of excellence and trademarks for their home institutions. Um, yet distinctiveness, I feel, only truly becomes a measure of success in the context of alignment with the parent organization and effectively articulated impact. Having unique, noteworthy collections is no longer enough. We are beyond an era where possessing treasures is seen as a mark of achievement. Today, distinctiveness is measured by what we do with these extraordinary materials and how we connect them to the greater academic enterprise. Um, the discussion around the value proposition of special collections and archives has es escalated on several fronts over the last few years, and I created a nice list of the many um, different resources. Ten years ago, uh, Green and Meisner's More Product, Less Process refocused the archival community on um, appropriate processing practices to accelerate access and use. Around the same time, ARL called on the community to expose their hidden collections and Clear followed up with the um, Exposing Hidden Collections grants. And many other granting programs redefined their programs around this idea of ex expedited, expedited access. ARL's uh, 2009 Fall Forum and Age of Discovery highlighted digital, collaborative, and innovative projects where collections um, had been leveraged to have extraordinary impact on teaching, learning, and research. ARL Special Collections Working Group became the Transforming Special Collections um, in the Digital Age Working Group under the Transforming Research Libraries Program. Uh, and meanwhile, OCLC Research encouraged the adoption of new workflows to expedite access um, through such reports as Shifting Gears, Beyond the Silos of the Lambs, Scan and Deliver, Metadata is the Interface, and Rapid Capture. Most recently, we have the publication of Pastor Portal, which um, provides examples of how special collections are being used to engage undergraduates in the classroom. In this context, excellence in special collections has become less about what you have and more about what you do with it. Well, this shift from highlighting the intrinsic value of collections to articulating value based on access and use begins to get at the important role of special collections in the academic enterprise. We have not yet effectively articulated a value proposition that is based on an analysis of, bene of benefits versus costs. Um, so that's not the slide I expected. Um, oh, yeah, so um, I'll move on to the next one. There we are. Um, so in articulating the value proposition, um, in the midst of static or decreasing budgets, the challenges traditional academic models and the rapid transformation of research, teaching, and learning, we must now turn our attention to alignment and impact. And we must use our assessment to more smartly allocate resources. Um, when I hear resource allocators such as division heads, library directors, deans, and granting agencies discuss special collections today, I hear concerns that fall into three to four major categories. Mission alignment, especially around collection building. Measuring the depth of impact, uh, especially around teaching, learning, and research. Skill development around the challenges of 21st century libraries and um, what to do about Born Digital. I'm not gonna talk about Born Digital today. I'm gonna leave that um, conversation for other venues because it's quite extensive. Um, but in fact, I'd like to focus the remainder of my remarks um, on assessment and measuring impact as drivers of resource allocations. I'll tell you up front that I have no good answers to the assessment challenge we're facing. Um, so, 
that's where this slide comes in. Uh, for today, I'd like to use this framework in talking about assessment. In the context of the broader institution's mission, how do we measure the impact of our collections and services so that we can decide what to stop doing and where to direct resources and articulate contribution and success? Tim talked about collection assessment and the professional dialogue that provides context for local action. As an example, he described how his institution is refining and aligning collecting in the context of the university mission. His was a wonderful example of how many of us in special collections and archives are redirecting resources um, around collecting effort, redefining donor relations, allocating resources for processing and digitization, and identifying opportunities for impact. So perhaps precipitated by ARL's work on exposing hidden collections and an emphasis on um, collection level access to backlog collections by MPLP and followed by CLEAR's Hidden Collections Grant Program, some special collections are undertaking collection assessments to get a handle on what they have and begin to prioritize work. OCLC's report Taking Stock and Making Hay covers the scope of this assessment while identifying methodologies that can actually be used by special collections and archives to actually undertake surveys and assess their collections. One of the leading projects in this area was Paxil's consortial effort to undertake a collection survey to assess the collections in 22 Philadelphia area um, libraries, archives, and museums. This survey not only resulted in a collaborative and a successful CLEAR grant, but it also generated a surveying tool that can be downloaded by any library and used to assess your own backlogs. My own institution is currently in the final stages of a survey using this tool and the methodology, which we modified for our local needs. At OSU, we intend to use the findings um, from this survey to uh, establish an understanding of the hidden collections we have to determine the magnitude of the processing challenge ahead of us and identify priorities for the allocation of existing and new resources. In order to identify priorities for resource allocation, we will evaluate what we find in the survey against the university strategic plan, the library strategic plan, ins traditional institutional strengths, known faculty research, and engagement opportunities. As our project archivist meets with curators to uncover hidden collections, she assesses the preservation concerns and um, the accessibility levels, but she also makes the curators assess and rank research value based on these areas of alignment. So here's one example of how one of our collections aligns with a program on campus. So you see that the university has put in its strategic plan that one of its areas um, of strategies is research and innovation. Uh, in response, the College of Arts and Sciences has um, said, well, we're going to do cyber-enabled discovery. Um, Dance has followed by saying, well, we're going to do a Center for Performance Documentation, which includes um, ACAD, which is an assisted computing center for um, capturing dance. And this made um, the libraries and TRI, the Theater Research Institute, very happy because we have, um, from a ways, ways back, dance notation collections, which are very much documentation of dance. It's the capture of how a dance should be performed. So the discussion of collections assessment and alignment of collections deepens the concept of distinctive collections. The most relevant special collections then not only draw recognition from the broader research community to the institution as that place to go, but also tied closely with the university's academic program strengths or library collecting strengths enables the academic enterprise. Um, in exploring distinctive, distinctiveness, um, Scott Walter um, has noted that it's not simply what, that a collection is unique, but that there are aspects of what the collection provides to campus that bring a synergy that is also unique. Not just the content, but what the content allows campus to pursue. Beyond aligning our collections in content, we need to find measurable ways to connect them with what's going on on campus and leverage their uniqueness for maximum impact. In this way, collections become a service. Similarly, the articul articulation of distinctive services links successful access, use, and engagement services directly to areas of strength and the needs of that particular academic community. At its core, the concept of distinctive services is both connecting people with scholarship well but in ways that are appropriate and responsive to an um, institution's mission and values and goals. We need to develop services that are consciously connected with a core idea that's woven throughout our institution's fiber. Fran's going to put forward two sets of distinctive service clusters for our consideration. 
uh, one based on strengths in the university archives and another in exploring the power of collections when they are connected to the curriculum. For my part, I would like to focus on where we might be with special collections engagement and then turn our attention to the challenges of articulating impact of these service activities on the university's teaching, learning, and research goals. Special collections have been lo long been a site of um, intensive research and uh, sort of embedded in the research enterprise as uh, David Schumacher was talking about this morning and continue to explore ways to make their uh, collections more discoverable through online description and digitization. And it turns out that special collections uh, librarians and archivists have been uh, quite busy in the classroom actually. In addition to the 47 case studies published in um, past or portal, I found this to be true with the response to a project I'm working on with Tom Hickerson for ARL's Special Collections Working Group. We asked the ARL libraries for potential um, case studies that would provide evidence of um, alignment, mainstreaming, and integration of special collections. And I was expecting a small number uh, and was hoping for a wide range of examples, you know, in cataloging, acquisitions, facilities, web delivery, as well as research um, and instruction and outreach. But rose, what rose to my attention uh, were the rich stories of how special collections are connecting to the curriculum and are used for class assignments and supporting scholarship, including un undergraduate research. In, in an ARL spec kit in August 2010, which focused on special collections engagement, they found that most ARL libraries are staging exhibits, holding events, engaging students and faculty in the use of collections, and connecting virtually with blogs and social networking. So this is clearly where libraries think alignment is, is in, around this area of engagement. So here are my colleagues in the flow of engagement uh, in research consultation uh, embedded in the classroom and uh, engaged in academic discourse out in the library and on campus um, and hopefully in um, student and, and faculty spaces. Just as our liaison library colleagues have been moving the target of success to deeper levels of engagement and partnerships with faculty that refocus on building critical thinking and information literacy skills, special collections librarians are also working with faculty on to embed our distinctive materials in the classroom, in the research process, and in pathways of academic discourse. At OSU, our subject area studies and special collections librarians, including archivists, are working within what we are calling an engaged librarian framework. The framework calls for partnering with faculty in course planning, uh, providing expert research, uh, research consultation, facilitating scholarly communications, and a host of other embedded practices focused on the user rather than on the collections. And certainly there is an opportunity for these services to be more connected to and seamless with the distinctive services throughout the rest of the library. What strikes me here about where we are with access, use, and engagement, however, is that we're really struggling with how to measure impact of these distinctive services. In his question and answer session um, earlier at OCLC uh, in last June, uh, Walter was asked how uh, academic libraries might measure the success of these services. He cites the need to connect library measures with the university's strategic plan, and these are usually very quantifiable uh, metrics. In fact, the OSU Libraries is in the process of mapping some of our typical assessment measures like LibQual and the ARL stats to ways in which the university is measuring its progress towards a strategic plan. Good assessment measures of actual impact, however, um, are hard, hard to come by and quantifiable me uh, measures don't seem to deliver. Special collections assessment is similarly fraught. The ARL spec kit on engagement found that the assessment of outreach and engagement efforts is inconsistent at best and generally lacking. Institutions feel that they are not able to quantify the success in their efforts, and this in turn limits the ability to compare activities with um, their own institution or across institutions to plan further engagement effectively or to communicate the results of outreach activities to the larger special collections community. So they felt like they couldn't answer a lot of the questions. This is not to mention the inability to articulate their success and impact to their resource allocators. The special collections community is starting to turn its attention to tackling this issue. So the um, Archi Archival Metrics Toolkit was funded by the uh, Mellon Foundation and it provides mechanisms for assessing archival services based on feedback from online users, uh, students, and instructors. Uh, ACRL's Rare Books and Manuscripts section had a plenary session last year on assessment 
And from this, RBMS has established a metrics and assessment task force charged to examine practices for gathering and reporting information to demonstrate the value and impact of special collections and archives. This year's fall issue of RBM will focus on assessing covering assessment covering collections surveys I'm sorry, let me start again. Covering collection surveys, um, evaluation of processing workflows, user and public service feedback, impact of instructional outreach, and usability of online archival finding aids. As we call for alignment in special collections activity, there's also an opportunity for alignment in assessing impact. Changes to the ARL statistics explicitly request that special collection statistics be included in the data each library reports already. At OSU, Special Collections contributes to the database that gathers information about reference activities, and we're really looking forward um, to exploring new tools with our li liaison librarian colleagues about um, new tools to measure instruction and engagement activity and impact. Special Collections also need to get and keep the attention of their library's assessment librarian. Additionally, as we heard a lot today, there's a significant role for using stories to express impact. We need to capture and get our stories into the pathways of administrators who can use them. I, think, I also think that special collections need to take a closer look at the suggestions put forward in ACRL's value of academic libraries. Current trends in research libraries and in special collections can be mapped to some of the most pressing issues facing higher education. And I've done a quick um, a mapping here. As we develop strategies for assessing success in special collections, it's critical that we stay focused on impact. Measuring the outcomes and achievement and making connections, collaborating, uh, developing partnerships, building critical thinking and information skills, and advancing research agendas are our next big challenge. We need to ask ourselves if that data that we're gathering um, answers the question about how we're actually having impact on our campus communities. It is only when we know how our distinctive collections map to areas of strength at our institutions and what impact our experts are having when they connect with these materials with the constituents through distinctive services that we can begin to decide how to spend our limited resources more wisely. We need to develop a culture of assessment within special collections and archives as well as our broader libraries. And we need to have a robust toolkit of strategies for providing resource allocators with the information they need to make data-driven decisions. We need to arm our leaders with stories to tell funders how we have advanced scholarship in impactful ways. And we need mechanisms that help us better understand where to put our efforts to have the most impact on teaching, learning, and research. So thank you very much, and I'll, I'll take some questions if there's time. <laughs>